the goal here today is pretty much just hooking you up with some quick and easy that you could use for a, a visual uh, this won't be super detailed or for any of you metal heart experts you probably will already know how to do this kind of stuff so you don't have to watch this video so let's just dive let's just dive right on in so go ahead and create your, save your blender file to start off all right so first things first you want to save make sure you have your place saved second we're just going to press shift a bring in a cube you know the usual and then second thing we're going to do is press tab to go into edit mode i'm going to right click i'm going to subdivide it probably like a few times and now what we're going to do is enter sculpt mode okay then we're going to click on grab pump the strength up and what I like to do is to give it around a radius of like 150 or something. You don't want it to select the whole thing, so maybe 125. And then what you're pretty much going to do is just click. Oh, wait. You also got to turn on Dynatopo. It's a huge part of this process. Shout out to another YouTuber I saw doing this. I'll link their stuff below. So you just click, drag, click, drag does not have to be perfect. I sometimes like to mess with the camera just so when I'm dragging, I'm getting it in one consistent kind of direction. For any sculpting pros, feel free to let me know how to do that. So I just click and drag, just go go crazy, go stupid. Like don't, don't overthink it too much. You don't want to get the, you definitely want those like shapes to be a bit more defined Sometimes they can kind of collab, but sometimes you may not want that. You can get away with some of it though, to be honest. Okay, now it's looking kind of crazy, but that's fine. You want it to look crazy. Uh, save it again, because this is prone to a lot of crashes, to be honest. So head into your modifier tab from here. I will subdivide and just make it look pretty. I'll start going a bit crazy because I got a little bit of a powerful Mac. I just subdivide at least by four. You could do by five, but you could see from here and then you shade smooth. And now like it's looking kind of crazy, but crazy cool. And then the next thing you're gonna do is a simple deform. I'll give it a little bit of like a, this. Now from here, let's pull in our camera. So I hold down tilde, go to front view, shift A, camera view, press G and Y to pull it on the Y axis. Tilde again, view camera. Okay. From here is where you can play around with your uh, perspective, your focal length. I'll turn on a little bit of depth of field. I'll just crank that on on my viewport just so I can see before I start tinkering a little too much. A little bit of f-stop. The second thing you want to do is play around a little bit with the world. So uh, previously, you saw me bring in a bit of an HDRI from Polyhaven. Feel free to check out that website. It's, it's very simple. If not, if you're running into those issues, please comment below and let me know. Turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. I'm going to jump right into rendered mode. Now, let's mess around with the materials. I'm not going to go that crazy with this. In this uh, material tab, it's like that red globe. Click new. Literally just drag metallic up. Roughness. Don't do it fully down. It's truly, it's truly up to you. I like to get a little bit of roughness in there just because it's a bit more aesthetic. Um, now from here, you can rotate it, and that's really easy. So you go to click your cube, press N. Make sure you're on item and rotation on the Z axis. Right click, single keyframe. Move it down to the end. 360. Right click, single keyframe. And from there, you have pretty much like this animation. You should get some glare and fun stuff like that. I'm just going to 
I won't dive too much into detail here since you got the bread and butter. But from there, I'll go into compositing typically. And do Shift A, do a little viewer. And then Shift, right click, connect those two. And I'll just render a little still real quick. Just so I can see. From here, I'll add a little bit of lens distortion. I'm, if you've been following me for now, you'd see I'm like a fiend for lens distortion. Glare. I'll do simple, oops, not simple start, fog glow, just because I want to pump it up a little bit. And I mean, that's pretty much it. You could add in jitter. There's a lot of different things you could do here, to be honest. But I'm going to keep it pretty simple. So when you go ahead and click render, um, sometimes I do it as a PNG overlay or PNG sequence. You could do it as an F MPEG. Um, Nothing is out of the ordinary here with the render settings to get this. So if you follow any render guide, you'll be all good. But that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.